Hello friends, welcome to our website automationcommunity.com. Today we are came with another interesting example that is automatic stamping example using stepper and PLC. So the aim of this example is to understand the working of stepper motor with PLC and also to integrate this with a real life example that is the stamping machine. So let us see that. So here you can see I have created one HMI screen where I have created one conveyor, a pneumatic cylinder for stamping. From HMI you can enter two numeric values and one start stop button. So how this project is working? As soon as the user start button from here, the process will start. Conveyor will move, but the conveyor will move for desired number of turns that is given by user. After that, conveyor will stop and the stamping cylinder will come down to stamp on the product. Then it will remain in this position for the time given by user that is entered from here. After that, this cylinder will go back to its original position and conveyor will again start to rotate the desired number of turns given by users. So this is the simple project that we are going to understand in this video. So let us understand the PLC wiring required for this example. So first of all in the input we have only one start stop button. So in the source sync let us connect the ground of SMPS and we will connect 24 volt supply to one terminal of our switch and the another terminal of our switch is connected to X0 position. And Yes, we are going to enter the numeric values from HMI. So we have to connect our HMI to PLC via RS485 communication. Now we will see the output wiring required for this project. So first of all, when we are using stepper drive or servo drive, we are using, we only use transistor output PLCs. So here you can see in the output, there is two terminals like UP and ZP. So here we will connect 24 volt supply and here we will connect the ground of our SMPS. Now from here Y0 will be given to our pulse command of our stepper drive. Y1 will be the direction command for stepper drive. This is optional. In this project we are not going to change its direction as conveyor going to move in one direction only. But if you wish to change the direction you can connect Y1 terminal to the direction command of your stepper driver. Y2 output will be connected to one terminal of solenoid of cylinder and its another terminal can be connected to 24 volt supply. Now we will see the wiring for stepper drive. So first of all here you can see we have to give 24 volt supply so that you can see from here this is the ground and this is the plus voltage. So that we have given from SMPS. After that, these are the motor wiring. So there are the four wires in stepper motor. So by continuity, we can check one coil we will connect to A, a terminal A plus and A minus and another coil you can connect it to B plus and B minus. Now here we will see this is the controlling terminals. First of all, we have to give 24 volt supply to this enable plus and ground to this enable minus. So after giving this to only our stepper drive will be enabled and here you can see these are the pulse and direction command. So first of all in the plus terminal of pulse and direction we will connect 24 volt supply and its minus that is the negative terminals that are coming from PLC that I have told you Y0 and Y1. So Y0 will be connected to this pulse minus and Y1 will be connected to this direction minus. Now here you can see switch 8 and switch 1. So here there will be deep switch settings. So first three switch are used for current setting based on of your current rating of your stepper motor. You can do this setting of switches and required current you can obtain. After that from switch number 5 to switch number 8 it is the setting of how many pulse you want for one revolution. For example, if you want very high accuracy, then you can select the high number of pulses for one revolution. So say for our example, if we don't do any changes, 
so by default it will be 400 pulses for one revolution so if in our plc program we give 400 pulses it will rotate one revolution okay so current project we will assume 400 pulses for one revolution now let us understand the logic for our automatic stamping machine so as soon as the start button is pressed our plsy instruction will run and it will give number of pulses given by user that is coming from hmi to our plsy instruction so motor will run for that particular pulses when the plsy instruction has completed its pulses motor will stop and plc will internally set m1029 special register which is used to sense that our plsy instruction is completed so when the rotation is completed by using this bit we will start one timer in our stamping cylinder so based on the timing value given from user after that time timer will on and it will reset our stamping cylinder and m1029 bit so that motor can again rotate and this instruction can again work okay so this was the simple logic friends in the hmi it will not run as per the rotation over here because for that we need hardware stepper motor only in hmi we can understand only the logic for the working of our process so that is for explanation purpose only so quickly let us start our programming now i will open my isp soft software from here so let us click on the new file and write name of our project click ok so first of all let us write the device command list so x0 is our start stop button y0 is our number of pulses y1 that can be used as a direction but right now we don't need it y2 will be our cylinder solenoid and the important thing that is here is we are going to use d408 and 400 train because there are the latched registers so even if the user turns off the machine this value will not change otherwise every time when user turns on the machine this timing and number of rotation will be changed and the user have to enter it so we are going to use this two register these things you can know from the manual of that particular model that what are the latched registers for this particular model so here we can say that d408 will be the number of rotations from user and d410 will be the cylinder or we can say stamping time okay now we can go to our program right click on it and click on the new and click ok so first of all let us maximize this so first of all what we will do mathematical operations to the value given from user so let us say first is for number of pulses now what we are going to do a user will only enter the number of turns we have convert it into number of pulses so as explained in the logic one turn has 400 pulses so what we will do we will take one always on contact and now let us do the multiplication of d408 that is value given from user with 400 and store this into 412 okay so what will happen if user enters five rotations that will be stored in this register so phi has to be multiplied with 400 because 400 means one revolution so phi into 400 will be 2000 pulses so 2000 pulses means phi rotations so that thing is going to do in return in this register okay similarly we have to convert the timing value given from user so insert a new network from here and this is for stamping time okay so again i will take one always on contact and then i will do multiplication of 
B410 in here, user will enter time in seconds. So as you remember, in the PLC, we have to write 50 for 5 seconds. So if user enters 5 in the D410, we have to convert, multiply it with 10 and store this in D414. So let us say user is entering 2 seconds. So it will write 2. So we have to multiply 2 by 20 because in our timer, that is on 100 second, 100 millisecond timer base. So there we have to write 20 for 2 seconds. Okay. Now insert a network. Now we will write command to start stepper. So what we will do, we will insert one contact that is our start stop button. After that, we will write PLSY instruction. Then the first thing we are going to write is its frequency. So assume in the frequency 100 over here, frequency is for speed. More will be the frequency more will be the speed of the motor. Now, here comes the number of pulses given by user. So we have done mathematical operation and that is stored in 412. So here I have written D412 and our output is Y0. So this is the syntax of this instruction. If you don't know, don't worry, just go to help, then click on this button and write the name of any instruction that you want to learn and then press enter. And like this, you will understand what are the S1 and S2 for this instruction. Okay. So in this way, you can understand the instructions. Now, what we want when this instruction is completed, we want to stop this. And for that, what we will do, we will insert one NC contact of M1029 because when this instruction will complete its execution, this bit will set. And due to that, it will not work again. So if we want to start it again, we have to reset this that we are going to do in next step. Now what we will do, insert another network. As soon as this instruction is completed, we have to start one timer and also our cylinder. Again, insert a network. When the timing is completed, we have to reset everything. So let us insert no contact of timer. And with this, we are going to reset our cylinder, our M1029 bit and timer. Okay, here we have to write reset. Okay. And also reset timer T0. So this is the simple logic for our project. It's simulation we are going to see in the next part of this video. Till then if you like this and want more content like this, show your interest by liking and subscribing our YouTube channel.